Hi there, I'm Gary Garbutt, and uh, I wanted to uh, show you my my copy of a uh, early spark gap transmitter. These were used in, uh, from the 18, late 1800s to early 1900s. The first one that was successful was by Marconi to transmit across the Atlantic. <clears throat> and then, of course, later got used in, in ships. Uh, they had a quite a limited range, three to 500 miles, sometimes 800 miles under good conditions. And the, fir uh, <coughs> the first SOS ever sent was off of one of these on the Titanic. And uh, a very uh, uh, notable uh, situation there. This is one that uh, I built over the winter. Uh, I had just about all the pieces in stock, so uh, this coil I, I wound about 30 years ago and never used. And uh, what started it all was one piece, which you'll see later on, is a quench gap from the period. And this brass key, which you'll see later, which was made in the 1880s. And uh, so I decided I would uh, uh, build a replica uh, with parts on hand. And, and here it is uh, for you to see. There's a neon sign transformer giving 15,000 volts, charges this capacitor bank, fires across the quench gap into this silver wire, which I was fortunate enough to find. And, uh, and you'll see the spark later uh, go across here. Normally this would go out to either twin antennas or a ground and an antenna, but I don't want to uh, interfere with anybody. By the way, the, uh, the transmitted frequency uh, originally was 500 to 800 kilohertz, which is right in the broadcast band. This one transmits at 80 kilohertz, which is almost down to submarine frequency. So it doesn't uh, cause any uh, duress to, uh, to things. It is very dangerous, uh, of course, with the 15,000 volts in it. And uh, I got some old uh, books uh, for reference, uh, which was very, very helpful. And uh, uh, we're also going to show you the uh, receiver that I built. And uh, I guess we should move on from there. So this was uh, the piece that really started this whole thing. This is a pressurized spark gap from the 18 to early 1900s. And they're pretty hard to find now, so I was really thrilled to get one. And I've rebuilt it all, and uh, it works just, just wonderful. So that was the key piece that started the whole project. I was fortunate enough to one of the uh, local ham club fellows had this old key from the 1890s. So it was very, very period. I was very, very pleased to get, uh, to get that to go with the station. Uh, and here we have a, a receiver that I built that would replicate what was used in the day. Uh, it has the two tuning capacitors on it and the tuning coil, so you can select different f frequencies. And of course, the old uh, uh, magnetic type uh, earphones. So we're now going to key the uh, the spark gap so you can have a good look at it and here we go. So these were uh, about 500 watts and uh, the uh, they went out of favor, of course, when the uh, vacuum tubes came out, but they were so unreliable that the ships always kept their old spark gap transmitters because they were so simple and reliable and always worked. So there you have it. There's my version of a spark gap transmitter.